Howdy y'all. So it is the end of November. I'm getting a little bit closer. So today I put in that negative ground strap, um, temporary plumbing just to test out the fuel pump and setting unit. So I sucked out all the fuel out of both sides of the tank. So I've decided after just kind of looking in the tank a little bit and how there's that uh, hump that it goes from the one side to the other. And so the factory sending unit actually has all the stuff to um, properly level out the tanks. So I'm gonna end up running this, um, unfortunately. So modified some things, took the filter, took a bunch of other things out of there. So now it should be um, solid. So I'm gonna throw the fuel pump in there, um, the rest of the components on top, mount this thing back up in the tank uh, maybe today I'll fill the tank with, um, about five or so gallons of diesel. And, uh, I might actually try starting it with the key. So I have most of the stuff wired up except for the final fuel pump shutoff, which, um, I'm gonna have to take a accessory on wire. So once the ignition is on, um, to give this little thing right back here, you can't really see it. Um, uh, yeah, right there, uh, pop. <clears throat> so that needs a 12 volt positive to run. So, but if I do a uh, keyed start, um, I'll probably just jump that to the battery right now, given everything's still kind of a mess. So, hoses have been measured, uh, not ordered yet. If I'm gonna do that soon, and then start cutting and getting those things uh, all connected and fitted. Um, Got to figure out the serpentine belt. That's gonna be a little bit of a pain. So the AC has been deleted, so now it's just gonna be crank, tensioner, alternator, idler, and the power steering. Still also have to chop the exhaust off the back of the turbo, so I'm still thinking about doing a uh, T3 manifold with a turbo on there, which should mount right here. Be a little bit more comfortable than mounted down right next to the starter. So we'll see um, what happens with that. So still has to also cut a hole in here for my fender exit and obviously the whole front cage. But big thing is uh, if I can get fuel, if I can get most of the electrical done to the point where the battery charges at least and it starts the key, uh, that would be preferred. So, all right, I'm gonna keep uh, filling the tank and put that sending unit back together and I'll update you guys shortly. This is what the final product for the modified sending unit's gonna look like. So um, pretty easy. And so I'm gonna go drop this thing in the tank and button all that up. So here's that um, supply line for that other side of the tank. And then it's also got a, uh, a return as well. So thankfully all that plugs in and should be all nice. So the next thing is figuring out um, how I want to pull the power from this. So I'd love it if the ECU would keep it on, but uh, unfortunately with this thing just like butchered wiring wise, that's not going to happen. So I'm probably going to have to run a toggle or something, or maybe just wire it to the, um, jump it to the ignition on or the accessory on. So then whenever the key's on, um, you're getting fuel pressure. Still kind of not sure, but we're going to throw this in. Okay, so that was a major pain, uh, especially to get this one in because there's a lot of spring tension keeping that float to the bottom, but it's in there, all wired, plumbed back together. So now uh, I just gotta finish plumbing the rest of the uh, fuel under the hood. So I just gotta put some hose clamps on that and I'll probably run this lift pump in the meantime and fill the tank with uh, diesel. So that kind of feels a little weird, but um, I guess this is the, the time where it's okay to put diesel in your original, oh, I need the uh, yeah, power, whoops. Um, yeah, to put diesel in your gasoline vehicle. So I'm tidy up a few more things with the wiring and probably try to go for a keyed start today. All right, so this thing's not too happy if it's powered to get this thing open. So I'm gonna fill it up with diesel. And uh, I don't know if the 
sending unit will actually activate without the fuel pressure sensor hooked up. So what I might do is just run the lift pump manually and see if that'll suck fuel from the tank um, and just bypass that thing for now. So time to fill it and let's see if we get any reading on the uh, fuel gauge. So these VP Racing fuel jugs are a lifesaver. Uh, dirt biking, filling lawnmowers. They kind of bypass all that garbage that the newer gas cans have those safety features. So shout out to them for still making a proper and true five gallon can. All right, so my jumper wire's done. I'm just gonna plug that right in there. So that'll keep the uh, fuel pump solenoid open. Just make sure nothing's gonna catch. Um, yeah, it's all right if those wires get torched. Not gonna run it that long anyways. So let's see if the, uh, see if we get a reading on the gas gauge and then hopefully I can get the sending unit to kick on. Otherwise I'm gonna have to do a jumper for the lift pump. So let's just see what she all says. Ooh, I heard it. I heard the sending unit. Okay, I think the battery's too weak. Turns out the ground was only hand tightened from the battery, which I'm also really surprised that's the only ground going to the battery. So I'm gonna clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper, tighten that down. And then if it does it again, I'll just add a jumper cable from that battery to the engine block somewhere. Um, Cause maybe one of my other engine ground straps or something are bad. So I only have one right now, which is to this beautiful weld job of mine. And that might not be enough. So. Let's go check it out. All right, so I figured I might as well just purge the lines before I try to start it. But the ground is uh, it's cleaned, connected, and let's uh, get that sending unit to kick on again. So I did have fuel leaking from the uh, hose a little bit, so let's try it again. If we can hear it. Yep, it just ran. Let's try to, we'll just crank it, just see what happens. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Praise God, look at that. So I got the lift pump going. Um, hopefully these lines are just about purged. So it's been running for a little bit. Let's try to, let's go for a little smell sample. Yep, that is definitely diesel. So I'm gonna pop that off. And, ooh, got on my nose. Not a good move. Um, so I'm going to connect that line again and uh, crank this thing up and let's see if uh, she'll kick. All right, so those lines are clear. Um, I'm going to go plug in my, this is the uh, solenoid for the fuel pump. So this allows it to run. So if I want to shut the engine off, I have to uh, pull that. And then I'm also going to connect the lift pump. So... With both of those connected, she might give that a little, whoops, sorry guys, I might give that a little hand tighten. All right, so let's go crank it up and see. I think that should be set enough. Um, if not, I might just wedge a screw or something under there. So this is a no glow plug start. So it probably crank for a bit, but let's see what happens. Neutral. Come on, baby, come on. I don't want to toast my starter, so I'm going to give it a second. Oh, I heard a fire. And we got white smoke. So it means it's primed. Oop, hear my fuel pump leaking. Yep, so that's a good sign. So I'm going to bump this thing back out a bit. Jeez, I really need a better way of doing this. And let's go again. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Come on. You got smoke. I think it might want a little bit more on the idle side. Or maybe it wants glow plugs. Let's just try it again. All right. <laughs> 
definitely cooking with fire. I can smell fuel. Let's fuel my starter. Nope, we're still good. So I'm just gonna keep cranking. Um, Cause it probably wants a little bit more throttle. I'm a bit impatient. We're just gonna crank it. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Okay, it definitely needs the throttle pulled back a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna wedge that and go again. Hopefully that final screw adjustment and wedge will do it. So let's crank it up and see what happens. <clears throat> for no issues. All right, clutch in, and here we go. Oh, oh, it's running. Sounds a little funky. It definitely does not like uh, the idle position. So I'm going to go adjust that screw. We're going to push that north a bit and try again. So then I want to check for um, speedometer and everything else to make sure that all works. But uh, yeah, it's cool. It starts the key now. All right, things adjusted. Let's see what happens. I think it's still a bit low. Yeah, it's still a bit low. So that screw's been set. Hopefully it'll stay. Uh, I do want to see if it'll move. So I'm going to actually try to see if I can, if my clutch is bled correctly and I can go into reverse. So let's try this again. It's a little bit high for the idle. Let's go into reverse. No way. Uh, I just stalled it. Um, okay, so... My brakes are fused, but the, uh, let's see if I can go forward. Yeah, so she moves. I don't like to do this, but I'm just gonna stall it in third gear. All right. Um, cool. <clears throat> That's a good sign. Um, it's all smoky. So time to finish the plumbing. And uh, how's my my mounts holding up? I guess so. So, ooh, my turbo is like fused. That's not good. All right, let me try it again, and I want to actually see the uh, turbo and see how that thing's looking. So I might also bump the idle down just a bit. So I'm gonna put you guys down and uh, do this. All right, idle is set. Turbo is spinning. Yeah, buddy, let's go. So uh, I got to plumb it. Um, I want to check a few things. Maybe my timing might be off a tad. That could be why um, I can actually kill the fuel pump now. Um, maybe that's causing an issue. And then I also really want to see if I can run the factory sending unit without a lift pump. That would make me so happy. Um, and then I really don't like how these 
ones have been feeling these rollers. So actually, you know what? I might fire it up once more, make sure these roll. Um, Cause that would really scare me if these uh, belt idlers don't spin correctly. Uh, other than that, things seem to be looking and sounding pretty okay. Um, pop that last one off. Yeah, so I'm gonna fire it up once more, um, make sure that's looking okay. Yeah, block's still not too hot. So we'll go lift pump. Fuel, or uh, yeah, fuel pump power. And let's uh, try this again and make sure these things are spinning correctly. I've not finished the plumbing yet, waiting on hoses to come in. So for the most part, I'm gonna start putting this front cage back together. And hopefully in the next day or so, uh, I'll be heading off to a junkyard to get a um, accelerator pedal and physical throttle cable. So the original car was a fly-by-wire. And this obviously needs the, uh, the cable for the mechanical injector pump. So I'm gonna go head off to a junkyard um, probably this weekend and grab one of those still not exactly sure how i want to do the bracket but uh, i could you guys will get to see me uh, do a little bit more welding again so yay um that'll be good and basically besides plumbing for coolant and a little bit more wiring to tighten up and clip off extra wires um it's actually we're getting pretty close so Still trying to figure out how I want to do the exhaust. So a bunch of the bolts in the back of the turbo are kind of rusted and you can see I broke one off. That goes right there. So uh, I'm thinking I might just get a sawzall and just chop it, turn it, weld it, and then uh, just have the pipes come up and out right here. So this fender's already going and uh, I feel like in the DIY spirit, this thing desperately needs a side exit, especially if it's gonna be chooching, uh, which it will be, um, especially once I wire the, uh, excuse me, plumb the um, intake system. So uh, this fuel pump has the biggest elements um, you can put in one of those rotary ones. So she's gonna flow a lot. And I also have injector nozzles, which are, um, I think some of the biggest injector nozzles you can get for the 1.9. Again, not exactly sure if I wanna throw those in quite yet. Uh, I just wanna see how this thing runs and flows as is. <coughs> and as I start running um, thicker fuels in the future, uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, um, I might need those other nozzles just so it'll push it through there a little bit easier. So. I'm going to start bolting up this front. Uh, you guys might be able to see a little bit of this in progress. Otherwise, uh, I'm just going to do it and update you guys as these steps go along. Belt saga continues. Alrighty, so the belt saga continues. Um, so I went up and picked this up from Advanced. Doesn't work. Throw it out. Just kidding. We're going to take it back. Uh, so I remembered. I just had this like weird hunch of like, hmm... I still have to replace the serpentine belt in my 2013 Jetta. And after getting here, I realized I needed a double-sided belt. And so the one I bought was not, and it's also too short. I somehow remembered that the serpentine belt in my Jetta is double-sided. And I had this crazy suspicion. I was like, no way. Is there any way my Jetta belt would fit on here? So I had my new belt the micro v deco whatever 
sitting in this car for probably, I don't know, two or three months, um, just because I've been like too lazy to change it because the one that was in there was still fine. So here is the old belt from my Jetta. And it fits perfectly in here. I mean, obviously it's a used belt, but this whole thing's a project because, you know, I was going online and trying to figure out, all right, where could I get, you know, something that would fit. So here is my belt for my 2013 Jetta on this thing. And so, again, it's not great, but uh, she'll run. And so here's my new belt that has to go in. Right there. So there's the Deco whatever. So that's a very interesting uh, surprise right there. So I'm gonna go through this belt in and then start putting the front of that car back together. All right, so there's the final belt layout. Look at that, all fine and dandy. All right, gonna throw this thing back on crash bar and start plugging some stuff in. And uh, hopefully this thing will start to look like a car again. All right, so the front's starting to come back together. Uh, I'm just gonna zip this uh, AC line off as the bolt is being stubborn and I already rounded it. I'm gonna throw the radiator pack back in and then kind of plan for what I wanna do with the plumbing. So both coolant intake and exit are on this side, which I guess is a good thing. So then it's just figuring out where do I wanna route all these things and if I'm, if I remember correctly, the stock 2007 A4 coolant box, I think sits on this side, somewhere here. So hopefully uh, I won't need to go too crazy and I can reuse a lot of those lines. Um, and then there's some other plumbing I gotta do for the uh, oil cooler that's way down in there and the uh, glow plug, coolant glow plug heater. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna zip that off put the radiators in. Might throw some lights in if I'm feeling really ambitious, but I'm about ready to call it a night. <laughs>